Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm reviewing the Empire Trilogy. More dog-eared, moth-eaten, grotty old books. I love them. Oh, they smell of books. Nothing is quite as evocative as the smell of a book. Ah, oh, that smells like hundreds of hours of pure joy, pleasure, entertainment, thrills, chills, and emotional turmoil. These books are among my favourites in the epic high fantasy genre. They're by Raymond E. Feist and Janny Wirtz. They're a collaboration. They are a standalone trilogy. Hang on, I'm going to hold them up so you can see. First, there's Daughter of the Empire. Then there's Servant of the Empire. Then there's Mistress of the Empire. They're standalone novels, but they are part of a much bigger epic saga. Let me explain. Raymond E. Feist is the legendary author of such classic novels as Magician, Silverthorn and A Darkness at Sethanon, those books written between 1982, 1985 and 1986, according to Wikipedia. And in addition to those books, he's written a total of 30... 30 books. I've got most of them downstairs in my library. Yes, I have a library. It's actually just one bookcase, but it's a big bookcase and it is full of books, brimming with books. They are one long continuous narrative arc and it's best to read them as that. Start at the beginning, start with Magician and work your way through until the end. However, that is a massive undertaking even for a bookworm like myself. And sometimes you just want something that's going to last a week or two, maybe a month max. And that's where this trilogy comes in, because the Empire trilogy is a standalone trilogy within that 30 book larger work. And there are two main differences that make this trilogy stand apart from the wider um, selection of books by Raymond E. Feist. The first one being that these are a collaboration. They're written um, by Feist, but also by Janny Wirtz. That makes a huge difference to the content that you'll find inside. These books are better written than the books that Feist writes on his own. I don't want to slag him off. I don't want to imply that I don't think he's a good writer. He's a great writer. He's a prolific writer and a very successful and celebrated writer. However, he is also a little bit sloppy and inconsistent in his prose. And although Magician, Silverthorn and Darkness at Sethanon, the first trilogy of the 30 book set, are exquisitely well written, as the books progress through the set, they get less and less well written, in my personal humble opinion. Um, they are a little bit sloppy. The, the, the writing isn't as good. It's technically not as good as the books progress. However, these three books um, had obviously an injection of much Janny Wurtzness during their writing. Um, the plotting, the story, the vivid world, all of that stuff, that feels very Feistian. These fit in beautifully with the larger canon. It feels as if he just had a lot of help with his writing, with his prose. Um, they're exquisitely well written. They have beautiful dialogue, um, realistic, um, believable dialogue. Um, they have beautifully fleshed out three-dimensional characters. They, they are epic in scope and yet very, very intimate at the same time. Um, they go deep into the inner thoughts and feelings of the characters and really explore their inner depths in a way that I suspect may have a bit of a female influence as well. I think Janny may be responsible for giving the characters much added depth. Um, and they're moving. They're deeply, deeply moving. They're very, they're a very satisfying read. Each book of the three can be read as an individual book in its own right. You shouldn't do that because it's one story. It's one continuous narrative arc from book one through book two to book three. However, each book has a satisfying and pleasing conclusion. They 
it, you get closure at the end of each book. Um, the, the book takes you through lots of tragedies, lots of turmoil, an enormous amount of political intrigue. These books are not about battles and wizards. Battles and wizards are in these books, but they are primarily, I would say, 90% of the meat on these books is about political intrigue, political machinations, scheming, um, cunning plans and plots, um, cunning manipulations, deceptions, all of that sort of thing. It's, these are political books. This is about the rise of a political character a character who starts off as a 17 year old novice training to be a priestess and through circumstance she is forced into a leadership role and she has to do it very quickly she has to learn on the job and by crikey it turns out that she's got all the skills she's smart she's intelligent and she has all the political savvy to be able to overcome vast hurdles in terms of business her, her business empire she has a thriving business empire um, or at least <laughs> she creates a thriving business empire and she also becomes a hugely successful and powerful political player of what's known in the books as the game of the council um so mara a female heroine um and i must say i seem to really gravitate towards uh, fantasy sagas with a female central character i don't know why they just seem to be better in my humble opinion and mara of the acoma is a magnificent central character if you paid attention during magician the first of feist's epic sagas you actually get to meet mara um you meet her very briefly she's a peripheral character she gets visited by the central character in magician but in these books she is the central character um and it's quite exciting that lots of the events depicted in magician get revisited in these books i think actually in servant of the empire that's where the majority of the events from magician get revisited um because they have a concurrent timeline um the events in this trilogy of books is happening at the same time as the events in magician um you get to see them from a different perspective from a different angle the characters and the world uh, depicted in the empire trilogy are actually the antagonists the baddies the enemies depicted in the rest of the wider um, saga um, and that is the second of the two usps that i had almost got off track and forgotten to mention is the fact that these ones take you off to the other world to the place where the enemies live and the enemies now become the good guys and you're rooting for um, the people from Kelowan. Um, and as I've mentioned in other videos, there is a map. There are maps. Um, there are maps in the other books as well. When there's a map at the front of the book, you know you're on a winner. If you're a female with a heaving bosom, possibly menopausal, with time on your hands, and you're stuck in the middle of Droughtlander waiting for season six of Outlander to come out, you could do a lot worse than dip into the Empire trilogy. Don't just start on the middle book, because that's the one with the hunky guy in it. Start at the beginning, read Daughter of the Empire. It's the shortest of the three books. It is magnificent. You will fall in love with Mara, but then... Have a little dip into Servants of the Empire and see what you think. See if you recognise Jamie Fraser. It could just be me. It could be my imagination. Who knows? Anyway, the epic love story between Kevin of Zun and Mara is uh, well worth a read. It's thoroughly satisfying and tragic as well. And we all love a tragic love story. And then, of course, the final book, Mistress of the Empire is about as epic as any epic could possibly be. It redefines epic, as far as I'm concerned. And yet, at the same time, it's still incredibly intimate. It's all, it's it's still about political intrigue and internecine politics and machinations. And yet, at the same time, it has vast scope and huge confrontations, magical confrontations and epic battles. Um, but you're inside the characters' heads. You're thinking what they're thinking, feeling what they're feeling. It's all being described in intimate detail um it's it, it really 
draws you in on an emotional level and by the end of the book you will you will melt you will be in you will, if you have a soul you will you will cry you will weep at the end of the book in happiness that's the other thing i should mention actually each one of the books although tragic awful terrible events take place through the books and mara struggles and strives and struggles and strives each book ends with a happy ending and that's important to note these books will not make you miserable they will make you happy they're very uplifting they all have a happy ending and it starts happy really happy supremely mega mega uber happy um it, it's it's so satisfying the conclusion is it's tied up about as neatly as any conclusion of a book could ever possibly be tied up um all the bad guys get their comeuppance all the good guys get their rewards apart from a few good guys who have died along the way um but generally um it's a it's a happy ending it's satisfying justice has been done I love all of Feist's books, but as I said before, there are a lot of them, and it's quite a commitment in terms of time. However, these ones are the best of the bunch. They're the best written, thanks, I imagine, to the contribution of Janny Wirtz, and they're the most satisfying, the most rewarding, and they can be read as a standalone trilogy from beginning to end, and you're left with a glorious satisfied feeling at the end they're, they're brilliant books i love them as you can see they're quite dog eaten they're quite um they're they've got all sorts of stains i don't quite understand how i managed to get my books so badly stained I, I can only assume that it's because i do tend to eat and drink a lot while i'm reading them and i also read them in the bath so the pages get wrinkly from the steam what can i say um the empire trilogy by raymond e feist and Janny Wirtz buy it now read it so that was that thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time bye -zy bye did i cover everything that felt very short that felt very very short did i did i say enough see it's so difficult not to do spoilers i was i was trying so hard not to do spoilers that i get the feeling that i didn't actually say anything Maybe I did. Did I just repeat myself over and over again and just say they're really good, they're really good, buy them, they're smashing, they're wonderful? Or did I actually tell you anything substantive about them? I can't even remember. I just went off on a wild rant. But anyway, they're really great books. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much. See you later.